So before this video gets started, uh, I put a link inside my description in all of my videos for my Robinhood account. If you guys sign up with Robinhood, then you guys can actually get a free stock, maybe two, depending on the time of the year. Robinhood changes it up. Uh, just go ahead, sign up, and we'll both get free stocks. It's just free money, so. Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today, we are going to be doing the oil change on my 2008 Lexus LS 600. It is a hybrid, so some people are probably confused about like how to do an oil change on hybrids, so I'm making a video on it. So for me, this one's a high mileage LS600, so I put the motor flush in it, and I'll show you how to do that. And then uh, I'm also using high mileage oil and changing the filter, making sure that it's all done right. I'll also be making a video later on about how to change the spark plugs on this, because this car's a pain in the butt to work on. And I did it myself, and dealerships usually charge about $2,000 for labor on this car. The reason why they do $2,000, because this car is really hard to work on. There's like no space in here at all to do anything. There's usually a, a plastic cover that's actually right there. Um, so when you do the oil change, usually this, this is something like this. You can pop this flap and that's where the drain or the oil fill is. But I just took it off because it just popped right off. So there's some, once that's popped off, then you can see the, the oil cap is right here. Things to change your oil will be your oil filter, which is right there. Your oil, this car takes a lot of oil. So I got two five quarts and wrenches drip pan, a funnel, brake cleaner, paper towels, jack stands, and a jack. The reason why you need brake cleaner is because to clean up your messes, brake cleaner sucks up all the oil and like makes it all powdery and stuff and dries it up. So that's really good. Just get brake cleaner from AutoZone. It's like two bucks a can. So let's get into it. All right, so to jack up your car, there's these rails right here. Mine are a little bent, and that's okay. Unless you have a really expensive car, that doesn't really matter anyways, unless you're gonna sell the car, so. Um, you can do it with a piece of wood if you wanna protect those. And the jack stand just goes on those rails, and so does the jack. Me, personally, I leave the jack there with the jack stand, because I like to be extra safe. I'm only jacking up one side of the car because I can still fit underneath the car. If you want, you can jack, jack up the other side too. So for me, this is optional, but I always take off the cap first. So that way, whenever you do un undo the drain plug, it comes out easier. I don't know, it's some scientific thing. So normally cars have like plastic shields underneath. This car had a little flap here, but I just took it off. And this is gonna be where your oil filter is. Oil filters are generally in the same spot. They're usually at the bottom of the engine, but some cars are different and engineers are dumb. So sometimes it'll be like actually way up there or up top or something like that. Most cars is at the bottom and then the drain plug is on the oil pan back here. Make sure it's the engine oil, not the transmission oil that you're draining because that will be a bad day. So difference between oil, engine oil and transmission oil Transmission usually has like going this way, the oil pan's going this way. Engine oil is usually this way. But just make sure you, you uh, look up how your engine is if you're doing just a regular oil change and not on an LS, a Lexus. Make sure that you look up your car's uh, information to see where your oil drain plug is. Uh, generally, the cars are all the same. Just look for the big bolt that's on underneath the uh, oil pan. Um, towards the front of the car, that's the engine oil. And then the oil filter is generally in the front. So just look for that. And then make sure you get the right amount of oil that your car needs. So mine takes 9.5 quarts, which is dumb because that's expensive. Anyways, so let's uh, drain the oil and use our drip pan and get everything out. For the motor flush, I use this. Uh, it says to use it before every oil change, but I'm not doing that. So 
if you think your oil hasn't been changed in a while or whatever, you can use this. It'll break up all the sludge that's built up inside your engine. It'll clean up the engine. And in the directions, it says to not drive your vehicle. Don't drive your vehicle with this in it. So you put this where the oil goes in. So in the fill cap, you just put it in there, put the whole bottle. You put the whole bottle in for five minutes and you let the car idle for five minutes. So pour it in, let it idle for five minutes, turn off the car and drain everything out, do your oil change like you would normally. So for hybrids, to idle it for five minutes, cause I know the cars turn off, um, just keep your foot on the pedal and I'll put a video right here so that way you guys can see what I did. Just idle it yourself and put it a little over a thousand RPM and you should be good. All right, so the oil is draining right now. This oil still looks pretty good. Uh, usually if it's like really black and dark, that's bad. That means you haven't changed oil in a while or your engine is just really dirty. Uh, another thing to look out for is to make sure that your drip pan is big enough to hold in all the oil because this has a lot of oil in this car and I don't know why the oil, I don't know why this car takes so much oil but I've never seen a drip pan almost this full. This is a big drip pan. <laughs> That's still draining. If you can see how big that drip pan is, it's almost full. It's usually like a little filter holder right here. And it's just covered. Anyways, so this is the drain plug. It has an O-ring on it. Just make sure that you do change that out. I don't have any right now, and it still looks like it'll still hold a seal. It looks pretty messed up, but it'll look, it'll still hold a seal, but make sure you change those. 346 minutes later. So it's been like 10 minutes, it's still draining. You guys can't really see it in the video, but it's still drip draining. I'm waiting for it to like drip, and that's usually when I stop it. So make sure that you put the oil filter on, because I've seen people will do it at my work that don't put the oil filter back on and oil just shoots all over the place. So make sure you do that. I'm still waiting for this to drain and yeah. All right, so I don't trust the oil to change places. If you go to like the Valvoline or like Mobile One or whatever type of oil change place you guys go to that takes like five minutes. This is why I don't go to those. They said they changed the filter, but there's no way the filter got this dirty in 3000 miles. It's all crusty. It feels horrible. And then this O-ring is supposed to be changed out with the housing of the oil filter. It's all hard and uh, kind of flat. So they didn't change this, they didn't change the filter. They said they did. Uh, they did change the oil, so that's good. But other than that, I don't trust those places. I mean, the oil change for this car is super expensive because it takes up so much oil, but I paid for it, I should get it, so. The next challenge for me is emptying this drip pan and you can see it right there. It's right with the fill or the drain. So <laughs> good luck to me, but the oil filter is back on. The drain plug is back on. Everything's tightened. There's different torque specs for drain bolts and oil filter housings for every car. So just check your car's documents or research to see what the torque specs are. I just do it by a feel, what I feel is right, um, which most people do that. Now it's time to fill up the oil and yeah, check the car out and see if it drives normal. Also with the oil filter housings, sometimes with the oil filters themselves, you, can, you have to uh, fill up as much as you can with the oil. So that way you don't have any empty spots inside your engine and you don't break your engine. All right, so now everything's back together. The oil's filled up with nine and a half quarts of oil, a lot of oil. I clean off the top, everything's filled up. Even right here on the cap, just for future references, sometimes cars have the, they give you the oil that you need. Um, I went with OW20. I could have went with 5W20. It just depends on like where you live and uh, you could just do some research to see which kind of oil is best for your area. So that's filled up. I cleaned out my drip pan. So what I did when it was really full is I got the motor flush bottle and I just dipped it in here and then I used a funnel 
and poured it into the five gallon or the five quarts. And then, yeah, just kept doing that until there was enough space for me to comfortably do this. Just put this inside the rest of the five quarts and then any extra space I needed, I just filled up the motor flush with the leftover oil. And I used a brake cleaner. You just spray it in here. First, I wiped it down with all the oil and clean up as much oil as I could. could. And then I used a brake cleaner and I just sprayed it around and it dried up everything. So as you can see, everything is dry. Nothing should out. Um, another tip is whenever you do your oil change and you dump out all the oil into the quartz, um, just check the bottom, make sure that there's no like metal shavings or like glitter looking stuff. Cause that means there's metal shavings coming out of your engine and that's not good, so. And that's gonna be it for the oil change. So now this car's all done, I'm gonna start making a video about the motorcycle. I'm gonna make a motorcycle oil change video and show you guys how to do that. If you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on that bell notification so that way you can see whenever I post a new video, you guys can jump right on it. As for now, that's gonna be it. So just keep it cruising. Mm -hmm. Oh,